Hey, good day, everyone. I'm Robin Sparrow with the Viral Volley Podcast. And on screen on your left, USA Women's National Team member Jordan Larson. And on the right, German National Team member Louisa Littman, who I got the <laughs> pleasure of meeting, gosh, it seems like forever ago, but it's VNL at, uh, in Lincoln, Nebraska uh, a couple of years ago. So, uh, hey, thanks again for joining me, uh, coming over from the VolleyballMag.com interview, ladies. Thanks for having us. Hey, my first question for both of you is uh, definitely top athletes in your countries and if not the world, how do each of you continue to improve your gameplay? And we'll start with uh, Louisa. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I would say like at my age, like you're looking for example, to players like Jordan, who are sheep already a lot. I don't say that you're- oh, Thank old. you. <laughs> it's inferred that she's old, so. <laughs> You don't have to no, say it. Like, yeah, no, I mean, see, like, especially when you're playing abroad and have the opportunity to play like with world class players, you see like, uh, like what they achieved and how good they are. So this is kind of like the motivation that you like want to become better and better every day. And also like playing the sports you love and like trying to like become the best version of yourself. But I would say like, this is like my goal and my motivation. And so you, then like the plus is just like when you're able to play with like such good players or in a good team. So, yeah. How about you, Jordan? Okay. Yeah, I think, uh, I think it goes equally hand in hand, right? Being surrounded by great athletes and learning. And uh, I think even just observing like Louisa, like the, the age that she's at and like, you know, thinking back to like where I was and how professional she is and how she's handling things, like just how she takes care of her body and, you know, even she's teaching me things on like, oh, well, maybe I could do this for recovery or, you know, just trying to learn other ways that I could be better, maybe off court. And, mm -hmm. but then also on court, like, if only I had the physical capability she does, but. Um, she did way better than me. I have to say like my body was like a mess. No, 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 no. But, uh, but I think just like she said, I think our, our, we continue to talk about like, what are our end goals? Like, what do we want to do? Like, what is, what are we striving to be? And I think it is trying to be like being the best version of ourselves and trying to maximize that potential. And I think it's just always trying to dive into all these avenues of like, how can we get mentally stronger? How can we get physically stronger? You know, just tapping into all these different like avenues. Um, and I think just constantly checking yourself on that. Like, how do I keep pushing the envelope? You know, like I feel way too comfortable in this situation maybe. And like, how can I still make myself uncomfortable and, and still continue to push? And I think this was a true testament of like this whole situation of mental strength and physical strength. We played 22 matches in 35 days. That's wow. not physically nor mentally like normal right mm -hmm. but I think it's a, it's a good challenge to see how far you can push yourself outside your comfort zone and when you are physically fatigued or mentally fatigued can you still show up every day and give your best um and don't get me wrong there's been there were times where we're like can we do this are we sure you know but I think it's it's reassuring to know that we're both in the same boat and we're both struggling but also trying to push past that that um that uncomfortability and, and things like that. Oh, pushing the envelope is always good for the body, right? Yeah, seriously, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, so um, I got to ask, during the pandemic, what were both of you doing to stay in shape, anticipating the eventual comeback of volleyball? And we'll start with you, Jordan. Uh, yeah, I. Uh, we were lucky that uh, on the national team, we were still doing like calls like twice a week with our strength coach so he was kind of like watching us work out like I had a little gym in my um, garage that I was able to do stuff and then I had a Peloton at home so I was able to do some hit classes uh, there and mm -hmm. um, so I don't know I felt felt pretty good and then I think just like cooking at home was nice just being at home going on walks with my dog um, mm -hmm. those were all like it's it was a good like mental break a little bit just stepping right. away and, um, but yeah I think that that's mainly what I was doing. How about you Louisa? Yeah, so uh, for me, it was like also a lot of homework for sure, like um, not a lot of like heavy stuff you could do because there was no weight room. Um, so for me, it was more like getting more core stability, working on the little things a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And yeah, also like John said, just have more time for yourself. So like cooking, reading, like yeah, going more outside for walks and like just come down a little bit from all mm -hmm. this rush we had the past years. And yeah, and then I tried the first time in my life beach volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Uh oh. Which was, yeah, it was so hard. <laughs> it was pretty good for my body because I didn't have so much pain. So it's just like nicer to all your joints or for your for all your joints. Mm -hmm. And um, no, it was a great experience. Like it was yeah. great that I had for this. And yeah, it was really good. I think it teached me a lot. Was it easy for the both of you to after taking the probably the longest breaks you've had in your career? getting a feel for the, your touches again, or even just getting into a rhythm? And we'll start with uh, Jordan. Yeah, I I was a little concerned about that, you know, after, I mean, it was like 10 months of like no competition, but we were able to get in the gym a little bit with USA Volleyball and like, you know, we were playing in twos or threes, you know, but mm -hmm. masked up and things like that. So I still, you know, the touch did take a little bit of time, but it wasn't as big of a shock as maybe what I thought. <laughs> Lisa, so, I mean, you couldn't see, you couldn't see. Really. <laughs> but I, think, I think I've been playing long enough that it's, it's time away is actually probably better in a sense for body purposes, you know, but mm -hmm. I think as far as touch things, like it didn't uh, go away as, as fast as I thought it would. Yeah. How about you, Louisa? Yeah, I would say kind of the same like I was mentally a little bit like worried that I'm not like coming back or that I don't know how to play volleyball anymore but I mean like I tried to have as lot touches uh, as possible so we also had like a two weeks uh, training camp with the national team I tried beach volleyball and then also before I came to China I was able to train at my old club in Germany so yeah, I tried like to prepare as good as possible. Um, and then like, I also had this um, like two weeks more than Jordan had when I arrived in China. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it was, I think it was like more difficult mentally like to get back in this uh, competition rhythm than mm -hmm. uh, physically. Good, good. Um, well, being that the times that we're going through right now at this, this juncture in history with sports events slowly coming back during the pandemic, what has it been like for both of you to compete during this time? And we'll start with you, Luisa. Yeah, I'm super happy that we were able to compete here because also when you have a look to like Europe right now, I mean, they, the leagues, they are all playing, but with a lot of breaks because then they have some cases in the teams and then... I think it's like always a rhythm breaker. Like you're trying to come back, you're trying to keep your level or to improve, and then you have again cases, so it means quarantine. So I think um, for us, even if it was like hard and tough, like John said before, 22 games in uh, 35 days, um, mm. like I'm super thankful that we had the opportunity to play this competition and have this kind of like tournament um, feeling here. And I think it will help us a lot for the upcoming year. Um, yeah. And I just hope for also in general for the upcoming year that we can like keep playing, keep competing. Yeah. So yeah, it was, about it you, was Jordan? Good. yeah, no, it's, uh, like she said, it's a, it's really good to be back. And, uh, I realize how much I love to compete, you know, it's like mm -hmm. you, sometimes when you take your time away, it's, like is this you know do I still really love it you know I think that's that's the question at least I was asking myself it was like man you know like I've been in a long time do I still really love this game and I've never really taken that much time away to like fully like reflect on that and so I think for me I like came back and I was like gosh I, I just love it I love getting after it in practice I love talking crap to people you know like i just you know <laughs> but you're not going to talk crap to lisa when you see her on the other side of the net right <laughs> yeah you could probably mute that on the podcast but uh no i just i i love just like how can i you know find ways to beat the other team or like how you know strategically what can we do to change i just mm -hmm. i love that aspect of it and like being able to Kind of dive into that a little more and, and talk about it you know like hey Louisa what can we do you know we have this really tough team how can we beat them strategically you know even if it's mm -hmm. just amongst ourselves and just having those conversations really fire me up so um, I think for me personally I miss that and just being able to get back into that was great. Yeah now before coming to play in the Chinese Volleyball League this season what was going through both of your minds in regards to the uncertainty of when you would be playing volleyball again? Because I know, for instance, I was looking forward to Volleyball Nations League again and getting that email in March saying, nope, we're done. I mean, what, is it, what was it like for you guys to, you know, I guess, anticipate being uh, able to play in this league? 
Oh, yeah, I think both of us, at least I was texting Louisa, like, Louisa, I don't know if this is going to happen. You know, like we had so many just visa mm-hmm. stuff that was happening that just we didn't know. And so I think we were both, I, at least for me, I was like, I don't know, you know, because like you said, we had this anticipation, like, oh, we're going to play Nations League, like the national team's going to come. And then that never happened. And then, you know, we did see people going to Europe, but then even then they were getting shut down. And so it was like, is this actually going to happen? So I think it was a lot of uncertainty. And then I have David over there, like, it's going to happen. Don't worry. And I'm like, and I was like, are you <laughs> Mr. Sure? Optimist? You know, every, I know, seriously. I was like, thank God for him. Because I was like, I, I was definitely like, this isn't going to happen. We're not, I'm not going to play forever. And yeah, uh, but it ended up working out just fine. And yeah, yeah no worries. <laughs> yeah. How about with you, Louisa? Yeah, I was the same because I was, I think, in like August, September, I was like, oh my goodness, I don't know if it works. And like also to get a visa, it was like everything was just like more difficult than last year. And I was super nervous, super emotional also because I just wanted to come, but nobody Mm -hmm. knew if if we can come. And like, it's not, it was not in our hands. I think this was the hardest thing to accept that we can try everything what we can do but it's mm-hmm. not in our hands because like, yeah, we, we can't change the situation. Um, yeah, so I was just like, please let it happen. Like, I just want to go there and play mm-hmm. and just enter this plane and fly over. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, so yeah. But uh, like, yeah, I also had my boyfriend next to me. He was <laughs> always super chill and like, <laughs> he was really good, good support. support. Yeah. 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 It's good. He didn't have to be there, but you were in it, but he was giving you all the best support possible. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Now, uh, both of you have traveled quite a bit. You know, um, Jordan, you've been in Puerto Rico, Russia, Turkey, and now China. And uh, Luisa, you've been obviously in Germany, in your homeland, Italy, and, and China. What do both of you enjoy the most about playing internationally? And we'll start with you, Luisa. Um, I would say like, the other ways of competition because every league has like other strengths so for example here i would say it's a lot about like the transition and the defense side of the of part of the volleyball game and in italy uh, i think it was like a lot of like attacking like you always have tall attackers in front of you um mm-hmm. so yeah it's just like first like always also a step out of your comfort zone because you're not at home you don't speak the language and um, here for example also the time change and then on the other side but also a great opportunity because you always like meet like other players you're able right. to play with other players and um, like learn a lot from it and like improve your skills so I really like to playing abroad or have the opportunity um, yeah how are you Jordan yeah no I agree I think it's a lot of different leagues I think that is one advantage of not having a league like if you talk about advantage of not having a league in the states right like I think there's advantage to like us all like going out and learning something new you know like you take something from a little bit of everywhere you know like Russia you know the high blockers you know Turkey like some of the highest level you know you could possibly play and and here like she said like transition block and defense you know they are I mean we watched the first game of the final last night and some of the digs that they were making. And I was like, oh. it looks so easy. <laughs> yeah, and they're just so nonchalant. It's crazy. Yeah. So, and as an attacker, it's super frustrating. You're like, why can I not find the floor here? Yeah. And it's like, this is not, it's crazy. Yeah. So, uh, but I think the ability to take that and learn from all these things, uh, I think it adds a layer to your game, you know, like it can only ha- like help and, and understand. So um, I thought she answered it perfectly. Yeah. Now, um, Next question for you guys. How did you both come to play in China? It sounds like, Luisa, you were there last year. Um, and Jordan, when I reached out to you before knowing you were going to be in China, like, oh, I'm leaving for China in a week. I'm like, what? When did this happen? But how, how did you you come about playing in this, this I guess, a, a shortened league a schedule this year? And we'll start with you, Luisa. Um, yeah, so when I got the offer, I mean, I was lucky because I could call Maggie Kozo. Um, she was the opposite in the national before uh, mm-hmm. I came. So um, she played already for Shanghai. So I could call her and ask like, hey, how was your experience here? Like, would you recommend it? And like, it was great just like to call her first to get like just some insights. And she was like, the best thing is that it's so short because it's not that you're like, to the end so exhausted and in the European League because it's super long and to the end they're coming the playoffs so the super important matches and she was like 
just how they play the schedule and the rhythm is like pretty good for mind like mindset and for your body so um yeah she was also with the team and the club and the city for sure she was like did you say maggie was, Kozik? Yeah. yeah as in the beach yeah. volleyball player maggie yes. yeah wait, but wait, she was wait a second indoor. how did <laughs> she she was playing indoor and now she's playing with laura ludwig yeah yeah she was but before she crazy was playing, yeah, yeah she was in there also yeah, she was, i just found out like big one said all like players he had they were like they were indoor before and then after shanghai they, they switched, switched to beach, beach. <laughs> yeah. oh so yeah, we're maggie. gonna see you go beach with maggie no. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe who knows uh no uh yeah maggie was a long time opposite for the german national team for many many years yeah, also the captain uh, the captain yeah. for it. and then she made the transition the two years yeah, yeah i think ago? after shanghai she made three years decision. ago maybe three or four years wow. ago yeah so, I yeah. did not know that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Small world, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it is. is pretty good. Yeah, it's yeah. good. Yeah. How about you, Jordan? How did you come to play in China? Yeah. So I think I originally played here. We both played here last year. And I think for me, after spending so many years in Europe and kind of leading up to the Olympic Games of what we thought was 2020, I was looking for a, a shorter season that I could spend more time in the weight room. I think sometimes I've found like a better transition in the weight room for me to like the volleyball court. So I think uh, I wanted to spend more time in the weight room than maybe necessarily playing volleyball. So that was my initial thought. Um, but then this year came and uh, I really enjoyed my experience and we didn't know how long this, this actual season would be. We weren't sure if it was oh, going to wow. happen, right. What we talked about. Um, but normally that before the Olympic games, the Chinese season is definitely much shorter, but mm -hmm. I think like, for example, next year, I think it would be like more of a four month season versus like, you know, three, three months. So right. they do te technically go a little bit longer, but I think the year leading up to the Olympics is usually shorter, sh shorter. And then obviously this year was a unique year because of the current situation that we're in. Right. Um, Got to ask you this here, coming back to play professional sports during this pandemic, there have been a lot of major adaptations that had to be made in order to bring back competition. Things like living in a bubble or uh, with other competitors, regular temperature checks and COVID testing. How's it like going through this experience in China? And what other protocols did you experience uh, that, that you, know, you can let our viewers and listeners know that you know, in order to make this all happen? And we'll start with Luisa. Um, yeah, so I mean, yeah, the COVID tests were not the nicest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, but it's like in this year or in this sense, it's like necessary to do it. And I think how they find a way, um, like generally in this country, how they have it under control shows that they find a good way. And also that we were able to play the season and this kind of system with the bubble and having all these checks gives you also kind of like the safe feeling. And I really appreciate it. And like, I've never felt like, unsafe here because like you do all these tests and for sure I've never had it before that you walk through something and then there's a machine who like measures your temperature um <laughs> this, like high technology yeah, for me really <laughs> like they have like machines like before we walk in the hotel like because we we're really in this secure environment yeah. so like before you walk in the hotel there's like this little machine that like basically scans you as you're walking and so you oh, wow. it like tests your temperature and then we have this like before we walk in the gym, there's another one. And then there's actually like these spraying, like spraying, I don't know. It's like, or sanitizer? Like, it's like a sanitizing <laughs> thing yeah. that you like walk through that like submits <laughs> like some, you know, thing. It was the same thing like before, like when we went to quarantine, they like sprayed down all of us and our bags because mm -hmm. they just don't know. I don't know how, yeah. if they know it, have enough research about like how the virus is being transmitted or cross whatever yeah. so i think they just want to act, take extra precautions and things like right. that so but yeah like she said i think we we've done a lot of testing which has ensured like a lot of like at least for sure like mental security and like you know we feel very safe here and they've done a really good job of controlling it and um yeah it's been really good well going through this season the other part that i always wondered about being that i'm an in arena kind of person usually mc hosting but you know, China is the most populous country to have a professional league, particularly volleyball. And everything I've seen in recent years, everything is sold out, maximum capacity at all the venues. But you both played in empty venues. What was that experience like, seeing these huge venues with nobody in there and just hearing your own voices? 
Let's we'll start with you, Lisa. <laughs> yeah, it was, I think the beginning was weird. It was weird, Because yeah. it was also, it was so quiet. Like, like the start rotation, when I write it down, it was so quiet. You could hear, like, everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. You find your way. And for sure, you have maybe to push a little bit, like, more or, like, give a little bit more emotions in it to get this, like, competition feeling or, like, this game feeling. Um, but on the other side, also, they built up a huge, like, uh, LED wall. And then I think it was always on late matches that, yeah. you, that they tuned in all the, like, fans who watched oh. it, like, online. And then you had, like, these little pictures of them, like, yeah. live videos. Uh, yeah, it gave you kind of a feeling, I mean, during a pandemic, mm -hmm. that yeah. you're playing in front of, like, spectators or fans. But for sure, you can compare it, like, with like all the past years and we always played in full uh gyms and but yeah they find also here a good way and uh yeah you find your rhythm with yeah. it. yeah. it's it's weird for sure uh i always appreciate like to have the emotions like mm -hmm. to feel like i don't know have this feeling uh entering a, a sort of gym but yeah it's it was it was okay, it was okay. okay. Yeah. At first, how about you like, jordan when we started we're like Shh. Like nobody, like nobody talk. It was so, it was really bizarre. Well, Jordan, yeah, with you, was, with uh, you like, playing in Nebraska, you're used to having a huge sellout crowd anyways, but I mean that you had to be missing that crowd in, in a, like, yeah, for sure. with it, the play that was going on because hey, it's world-class play in that Chinese league. So how was yeah. it like for you? Yeah, definitely. I, I felt the same at first. It was a little weird, but I think what, once you get into it and you're, you know, communicating with your teammates, like you kind of, I mean, in general, right. When we're playing in front of a lot of people, I actually tend to tone it out. Like even mm -hmm. the massive crowds, like you can hear them, but it's all, almost like a tunnel like feeling like, cause you're so focused on what's happening and like strategy and things like that. So um, yeah, it, it was just bizarre at to start, but I think once we got used to it, it just became like normal. So. Yeah. Well, let's jump to the most current of events because, uh, Unfortunately, your season has ended, but I, you know, you finished near the top, receiving the uh, bronze medal in the Chinese League, uh, two O series win. Just to recap, over Guangdong, um, and that's Jordan's former teammate Kelsey Robinson. Well, they're still teammates, just they're playing against yeah. each other. Who, who didn't play because, of, from what I can read on the Chinese side, she had a leg injury, but it's straight set matches. But it looked like your team, Shanghai was extremely powerful and pulled it off in the end because they were tight sets. It looked like looking at the scores. Uh, can you guys comment on the play? And we'll start with Luisa. Yeah, it was, uh, I think the last match was really tough, like, but more mentally, like to get over this like physically fatigueness. Um, and we know that Guangdong is a great team uh, with like great players. And also I think they built up like what we got the last weeks, they built up a great team environment. So uh, no, but I think it was like just to have to focus on our side and uh, play the game and still get something. I mean, it was for sure very disappointing for us that we didn't make it to the final. And then, yeah, at least get, get something, get the bronze medal. So yeah, I'm very happy and uh, at least we we won this yeah yeah how about you jordan yeah also yeah good like she said like sometimes when you you're going into like playing for third or you know like it's leading up to the some of the final matches after a long tournament it can be a little more mentally and physically exhausting but um yeah we knew that they had um great players and we were gonna have to prepare and but also we were like let's just you know go hard because we you know, it's been a long process. So like, let's finish strong and like, end on a good note. So i um, yeah. really proud of our team for like pushing through um, because we, our team is definitely on the older side. I wouldn't say how old, <laughs> but we're definitely amongst the teams here. We're, we're definitely one of the older, more experienced. Uh, so I think saving our energy and using it to our best ability was, was good for us. Well, let's look at, at, at I think uh, they refer to it as a round one. I think it's match one of the series, you know, being Americanized and everything. But yep. um, Jordan, you had an incredible first night, 16 points off 13 kills, two blocks and an ace. Um, what got it going for you that first night? Yeah. Uh, gosh, I think just our team in general, we, we do a good job of um, mixing up the offense and trying. I think we wanted to get our middles going a little bit more. Uh, but Guangdong was actually serving relatively tough. So I think, um, but in general, it was just overall good team performance and um, just trying to stay in it. Again, trying 
also me personally like trying to finish strong I mean I think I was kind of at the end just like <laughs> oh you know like it's just it's it's been it's been a tough challenge but um I I wanted to save my energy and like you know because I knew there was going to be another match or maybe two so just mm -hmm. trying to trying to do it as quick as possible well your passing efficiency was <laughs> I, I believe if I remember correctly in the high 80% range. So, I mean, didn't do too bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it was okay. Yeah. So they, uh, okay. yeah, yeah. Decent. Yeah. What we strive for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Louisa, uh, first night you're right behind Jordan, the stat column uh, with 15 points. Uh, but it was night two that you really turned it on. Um, I, from what it looks like you finished the season as the second in, uh, points per set. And also we're the leading scorer of the league this year, which is, I mean, incredible if you look at the other names that are up there. But in that bronze medal match, the, the clincher for the bronze, 23 points on 22 kills. Uh, and that's a three-set match. Uh, you had the hot hand. <laughs> Did you turn it on because uh, you wanted to get that, it done that night or what? <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't we're just like, like what, what can we do to win that? No. Uh, <laughs> no, it was, it felt like, it didn't feel like this because it was like a tough match like physically but yeah I was like John said like let's get this win it was really like a tough match it was like close uh they I think also in the last two sets they were always leading mm -hmm. yeah. um so you always had this kind of pressure and we were also like let's finish in three sets uh, yeah <laughs> try everything for it <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so I mean also me as an opposite I think it's kind of my job to uh make the boards um but I would always say if I wouldn't have like or if you wouldn't have a really good um, reception, a good setter who helps you, or like good middles who make who like scare the other blockers, mm -hmm. you, I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, I wouldn't be able to make the point. So yeah, it's always like big, big teamwork. Well, it's a great team effort. And before I let you guys go, I got to ask, what's next for both of you? Um, we'll start with Luisa. <laughs> sleep <laughs> <laughs> like going yeah, very there. short term <laughs> yeah 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 no like going back to clean my body like in a different way like no just like really first like recover from from it and i'm pretty happy that i'm able to spend christmas home mm -hmm. uh with my with my boyfriend and with my family and my dog and yeah i think this is and like first having a good coffee yes yeah. we all can't wait for a starbucks you know <laughs> you don't enjoy the so chinese blend <laughs> uh, well, well we've, we've all brought our own i've been doing pour over this whole time with my own coffee and i'm like just i just want feeling. some yeah, yeah someone else to make my coffee <laughs> that sounds so selfish but i'm like oh just a nice in a christmas starbucks cup you know yeah. like just like oh here you go so we're all we're both looking forward to it and yeah it's gonna be great yeah. Gotcha. Well, how about competition wise? Uh, just because I know, well, I'll put the most obvious out there. May 11th is the start of VNL for the women's side. And Germany has Russia, Netherlands, and Belgium in their pool. Uh, in if the first I look at it correctly. <laughs> is it a first week? <laughs> okay. Yeah, oh, God. Here we go. Oh, okay. Let's go. Shocker. <laughs> Okay. Hello. And then the it's USA does. The year of no yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, it's easy. Sorry no to, to, yeah, to, yeah. To, to surprise you with that news. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I for sure I knew. No. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, it's a good possibility to improve. Yeah. <laughs> well, then for yeah, you, Jordan, I mean, for USA, they've got um, Dominican Republic, Canada, and Cakewalk, Brazil. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So no you guys obviously both have VNL coming up, but anything before then, because, um, I, you know, from my understanding in previous years, because of the Chinese league, you can play at another club team up until your national team commitments come about. Is there anything in that that's coming up for either of you? As Luisa? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. For sure, I would like to like finish or play another uh, season or like the rest of the second half of the season. But I think in Europe, you just have to see like how it's going with all mm -hmm. the leagues right now because like the cases are like increasing right now, and I think you have really just to see like how it's like what's possible and like where and yeah. So I think yeah, it's hard to plan something because you never know if it's gonna happen or not but for sure like i really want to uh play another another season or like yeah it's another season, season for, us, yeah, yeah. for us yeah 
How about well, you, I Jordan? I, I like, mean, I know I think, one thing you're going to be doing. and uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, and I think also just to touch on that, I think financially mm -hmm. too, right? This year, I think just in general across the board, you know, clubs have had to make like significant financial yeah. cuts just because they can't pay what they used to, you know, it's mm -hmm. their business, maybe not up and running or, you know, like sponsors may just not be able to fund. And so I think you kind of have to take that into question, you know, is it worth my time going overseas, you know, for a 40% cut, you know, where maybe mm -hmm. I could stay home where it's a little safer environment. You know, I think these are all questions that athletes are having to ask themselves and what that is. Um, and as far as for me, we are starting a league in the States. Yay. <laughs> and so, um, <laughs> I I've been trying to like, you know, convince this one to maybe come play too. I'm like, Hey, you want to play together more, you know? So, uh, we'll, we'll see. Um, but yeah, we are starting a new league in the States, uh, coming in beginning of February. And you so can we're really, it. it's okay. I don't mind. I, I promote yeah. the game. So you do okay, athletes good. unlimited. Come on. Athletes you can do unlimited. it. Yes. Yeah. Athletes unlimited is starting uh, beginning of February and, uh, we're really excited. I know I'm really excited. It's been, gosh, poor Louisa's had to hear. I'm like, oh, I'm so like, just, we're, we're almost. Louisa, through, like, just our... come out. You'll enjoy it. Nashville, Tennessee is really nice. I, I would I like to. Yeah. I think it's like, it's just <laughs> and you can awesome. win some money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm like, I'll pay you a little extra. No, I'm just uh, no, 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 I just said it's enough when I meet Spot the first time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we just compare dog photos, that's all. Uh, so, yeah, no, it's going to be really great. We, uh, they've just done a really great job of organizing it. Uh, yeah, and it's going to be televised on certain platforms. So uh, we're really excited about that. And uh, we have some really great players. Speaking of Dominican Republic, uh, Batania is going to be coming and joining us. Obviously, mm -hmm. Shayla from Brazil. Uh, we have some pretty big names coming in, so we're really excited about that. And obviously, I, I've always played against Shayla, right? Mm -hmm. Like I've never yep. played with her, so I'm really curious to see. And I think her twins are going to be coming, and uh, I think it's going to be a really fun environment um, yeah. to get to know other people and also other young at like USA athletes that maybe have had to play in other leagues that we just haven't ever crossed paths. So getting to know that and um yeah. but also being in the states and being on like home soil i'm like what is yeah. this so yeah joining the hipster but, scene in uh, nashville no. <laughs> yeah seriously <laughs> so final question for you both and this is more of a reflective question based on uh what's been happening in the world but having completed your first season during covid what insights or perspectives do you have or have you developed regarding life on and off the court and we'll start with you jordan yeah um i would just say like continue to be as present as you can and as patient as you can like it's there's so much uncertainty and if you kind of continue to ride that wave like <laughs> i think both of us were doing that before mm -hmm. like what will end up will be you know it, it is what it is and i know that's a tough space to also be in but if you can try and remain as patient and, and as positive as you can and just try to I think stick with a routine even if that means you know working out at home getting up every day consistently you know like if that's what you need to focus on in the moment because that's really all you can control so I just try to stay in that space as long as you can um, but it's definitely not not easy so how about you Louisa yeah I would say the same I think it's just like finding your own balance your own rhythm like doesn't matter what's like I mean not that it doesn't matter but like be with you instead of like going with the wave like Jordan said because mm -hmm. there's like so much what's not in your hand and I, it's I think easy like to lose your focus and be also like always up and down was a big challenge for me <laughs> <laughs> uh, as well but yeah I think it's a good opportunity also to like to find what you really need to like be able to play your best volleyball uh, possible so yeah it's uh it was a crazy year for sure, um, but we all had to like get it how it was. So mm -hmm. yeah, uh, it was also, like I said, an opportunity to find more your rhythm, find what you need and mm -hmm. um, yeah, focus on the, yeah, on, on today or on now and uh, yeah, be present like Jordan said, yeah. Excellent. Well, ladies, it's been an absolute honor to have not only like both of you on the show and especially after the the, 
the journey you've been on in China playing and, and winning the bronze and uh, looking forward to catching you somehow, some way during VNL or, you know, in other international competitions, uh, Athletes Unlimited, hint, hint. Um, <laughs> maybe Luisa too, I don't know, but we'll see. But uh, I'm really looking forward to you. <laughs> the FIVB international competition schedule because it is an absolute delight to meet foreign players and see our domestic players that we don't get to see that often because we don't have a pro league in the United States. So I get to meet not only yeah, all our American no. players, but I get to meet wonderful people like you, Louisa, and, and Jordan, I get to yeah. see you around and this guy named David Hunt that just seems like an okay guy. <laughs> yeah, he's okay. He's okay. <laughs> hey, thank you for taking the time today. And on uh, the Viral Volley podcast and on VolleyballMag.com. So uh, what is the best way to follow both of you on social media or wherever you, you'd like to get your information at? We'll start with Louisa. Uh, on Instagram, I would say, on my Instagram profile, it's at Louisa Lippin, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thanks. I got you. I, I got like... you. I was like, I follow her, so you need to get on it. Uh, yeah. And for me, it's uh, my handle on Instagram is at gov. 1007 random and uh i do have twitter and facebook as well um but i probably on instagram the most active and i'm still trying tiktok i always say this on the podcast or whatever someone needs to teach me how to do tiktok all these young kids man yeah they're <laughs> dancing up a storm i know to i know like to learn. i still can't i can't like to learn figure it out i know i can't figure it you out you know what that's what luis has got to do for you before you guys fly home We're I don't think I'm not on TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> I'm not on TikTok. I know. I was like, I'm not you on TikTok. But... No, no, no. I'm not on TikTok. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're right, ladies, hey, I'm I, not on this way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much again. And I, I look forward to, to seeing you guys in person at one point in the near future. So uh, thanks Absolutely. for being on the Viral Volley <laughs> podcast, ladies. Yeah, thanks, Thank Rob. Thank you.